Hey everyone, it's Jack again with Toy Dojo, and it's been a while since we posted a video up on here, but we're back today, and today we're going to take a look at the Bad Cube OTS 11 Speed Bump, or their take on a Masterpiece inspired Trailbreaker. Uh, before we get started, I want to give, a, again, a special thanks and shout out to uh, Rando NG for making that introductory portion of our video. So thanks again, it's great, uh, and uh, I love it, and I know a lot of you guys out there like it too. So here we are taking a look at him. So now, this is obviously a early sample look at it, and not a final one. Uh, it seems close to final to me, but the actual version, I believe, will be coming with more accessories. The one that I'm looking at here has just this one uh, hand missile launcher firing weapon uh, that Trailbreaker family uses. I believe the other one, the actual release one, will come with two of these. It's going to come with, I believe, another one that has like three prongs on it that he used. I, I want to say one episode where he was turning out the fire, maybe out in the in the ocean. Um, so he'll come with that and then an extra face, I believe, is what he'll be coming with. So, uh, But taking a look at this, uh, let's look at this one here. Like I said, there's supposed to be two of these here with the actual one. This is nice. It's a nice silver painted weapon here. Uh, this here slides up and down. I don't know for what reason. I know it's... I know it does because it was messing with it earlier. Yeah, there you go. See, that slides up and down like that. I mean, it really doesn't do a function. Maybe just to make it look cooler. I, I don't know. So, there's that. Uh, it's going to plug onto his hand there, and that's going to plug into uh, the forearm area there. So, there's that weapon there. And here he is, uh, looking at him. It's supposed to be... Uh, Trailbreaker himself was actually modeled after a 1986... Toyota Helix, I believe it's called, H-I-L-U-X, and so I think they did a good job here representing that that Toyota here, obviously with the with the camper cab on the back there. So I think they did a nice job of, of recreating that look of that old '80s uh, Toyota. It's got nice headlights in the front here, these yellow turn signals here. The whole front here is uh, chromed out, really nice. This whole hooded area right up here is all diecast metal. And then the side panels here are all plastic. Everything else is plastic, but that's a nice die cast there. Four-wheel drive right here. Nice paint jobs on the side right there. On the back, you can see his brake lights and his uh, turn signals there as well. And underneath, uh, does a really good job, I think, at hiding the fact that he's a robot. Uh, obviously, right here, we can tell that that's a uh, crotch section there. And then these here are his legs, but... If you really didn't know any better, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at this. This is hiding a robot inside. I think they do a great job of here hiding up the uh, arms that are up in that place there. So the wheels themselves are made out of rubber. So you got, that's nice. I always like when they're made out of rubber. I know over time the rubber can start to, to wear out, but uh, there's nothing better than having a the vehicle, toy, transformer, if you will, with rubber tires. And then up here in the front, they got a place to put a license plate if you want or some kind of a decal right up there so that's cool so there he is uh, that's pretty much any rolls really well so that's neat uh, let's see how he looks with some other masterpiece vehicles and I have sideswipe right there or the G2 sideswipe so you can see how they did there and I think all my other ones are in vehicle form or in a robot form I should say but I'm going to bring in Ultra Magnus and put him along the side with him. It's that Magnus sitting here on the wing. Let's pull Magnus in right there. And you can see just how he looks next to Ultra Magnus. So I think that's a really good scale. Obviously the pickup trucks weren't super huge. These little 86's weren't huge. But obviously they were bigger than a Lamborghini. So I think that's actually a really good scale. And then compared to Magnus, I think that works out really well as well. Um, will he fit inside Magnus? Let's check it out. Take him up. And he does go inside Magnus. Now, the one thing, and I'll show you with Prime's trailer. Back here on the back, he kind of gets stuck. Right here. And that's because the camper, when we look at the camper here, you see how it kind of goes. It goes up, 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 and then it comes right to that little hilt right there. And that's the part that's getting stuck onto that. But you can get him in there. You just keep going with him. And just wiggle him through and he fits right inside there. So you can move him all the way to the front. And take sideswipe. Put sideswipe inside there. And be traveling down the road. Now, I guarantee you in the 80s, 
you did not see this. You did not see a car carrier carrying a Toyota pickup and a Lamborghini. I'm pretty sure. All right, so let's pull him out. And let's take him out. I'll pull him out the side here. And he fits up on top too, so just if you wanted to look at that. So there goes that right there. All righty. Pull Magnus in the back. I'm going to bring in Prime's trailer. Now, Prime's not attached to it because I have Prime waiting in his robot mode for robot comparisons, but we don't need him just to show off his trailer. So, will he fit inside Prime's trailer? He fit inside Ultra Magnus, so the thought is, well, yeah, he'll fit inside perfectly, but he really doesn't. And again, for the same reason, this right here is what gets it caught up. So, let's take a look at that. When he goes up, he gets stuck right there, and you can see that right up in here where he's getting stuck. So, he won't go in there. I mean, you could probably, if you jam it in there, it's going to break apart the trailer and stuff. So, see, so it starts to pull that apart right there. So, what I found that you can do if you wanted to have them in there, um, the wheels right here, they snap in right here in robot mode to the side of his uh, thighs. So, if you just undid them just like that, that kind of brings it down a little bit. So, that way now he'll fit inside there, no problem. If you want to store them inside there, if you're playing with them and you want to do that, just do that with the wheels and they'll be fine. Then take the wheels and just push them back. And then you got them back inside there. So, Alrighty, let's get them out. So now, typically with all the bad cube stuff, they have all of their bots packaged and shipped in, in a vehicle form. So we're going to go ahead and transform them from vehicle to robot mode. And obviously I think robot to vehicle is the I guess the more difficult transformation out of the two but since he will be packaged this way uh, we're gonna take him from this mode to vehicle or to robot mode so start off here uh, we're gonna go ahead and just start off I guess here at the bottom just pull apart these feet here at the bottom break apart the camper right here at the bottom here that opens up Let's pull these off here on the side too. Take that off like that. Pull this up just like that. And this whole piece is just, it's three sections that are all connected. You can take that by opening up this front here where it says four wheel drive and just pulling that open like that on both sides. And then just pulling this stuff apart just like that. And that all comes off in one piece. Like I said, it's all connected, but they do bend. So when you put them in his robot mode, it's all gonna bend and hide away in his backpack. So just get all this stuff out of the way. Like that. Okay. Now we can start working on this part right here. And so this piece right here is connected to this one here. So you just want to kind of break that away like that. And that pulls all of his bottom part of his legs out. And it hides really nicely. Like everything hides nicely inside the uh, camper here. So it's really cool. So pull those out like that. And separate the legs. And then here on the legs, right there at the top of the thigh, you can see where they're like this. Just push those out like that. Push this one out like this. And that's going to get his legs done. Uh, or his, his thighs out. So one thing you want to do now is you want to take this and rotate this up. That's going to hide that mushroom peg right there. So what I found is you want to lift this up and kind of bend the leg. That way you can rotate this out. Now the only one concern I guess I would have over time with this is because that does sit behind this red piece. There, it, it seems like there is a lot of room there where it's not going to rub up against it. But if you don't pull this down, see right there, I think, I think that might rub up against it over time and cause some paint chipping, which... We can see right there, let's see, right there you can see a little bit of it happening uh, just because of that. So just be mindful of that when you get yours. And you're going to rotate that up just like that. And get that back in focus right there. And do the same thing on this side here. Take that, rotate this one up. And then that again covers up those mushroom pegs that are right there in the way. So, all right, now down to the bottom of the feet here. Just going to take all this stuff and just open it up. Get all this out, pull that leg out, and when you pull this down like this, if you notice back here on the back, this silver piece, that's like part of his knee when he's in his robot mode. So you want to take that and fold it down, and you got to push that through as you're pulling this out like that. So you want to pull that, push that right through like that, and so that way you get that, and then that flips out, and that's going to hold and, and, and be just like this onto it, okay? So let's go to the same thing on the other side. Let's pull this down, pull that out. And then just push all this through. Just like that. And there we 
we go. So there goes that, pull that up, lock that down just like that. Okay. So now the, the, to getting him from vehicle to, it's not, it's not difficult from vehicle to robot. There's certain pieces up here, like on the backpack, that are a little bit challenging um, at first when you first do them. Even the second time I did it, I was on a plane over the weekend coming from work up in Dallas and I was messing with them and I just couldn't get it for the life of me. And I was like, my goodness. So I finally got it and, but we'll see if I get it today without any problems. So just went ahead and just open up all this stuff here. Okay. We're going to take this and this is going to come down like this. This will come up and the wheel, take that and you want to fold that over just like this. And the wheel's going to hide right inside there. All right. So you take that, fold the foot up like this. This part right here is going to come down. And this is all going to hide. You got a, there's like a double hinge inside here. There's one, there's a hinge down here and a hinge right there. And that, you got to take that and fold it up just like that. So that way that will hide into there, just like that. And that comes down like that. On the foot, you pull this out to the side and there you got one leg done, just like that. Okay. So let's go to the same thing on the other side right here. Take that, flip that wheel down just like that. Open this up. You're going to spin that foot section like this, flip it up. This can open up and that's going to open up as well to hide that. Then over here again, take this, hinge that up just like that. Cause you want to hide that piece right inside there. There you go. And that's going to click into place right there. And there you go. So now we got his bottom portions of his legs done. And all we gotta do is mess with the top right now, okay? So, messing with the top. Okay, first thing you wanna do is just take this piece right here, and this little black bumper piece that's right here is going to unpeg from all that. So just get a fingernail right here, and just unclip that. Because what's doing is this, I don't know how well we can see that here, because he's all black, but there's a peg right here on both sides, and they go into those two peg slots that are right there. So when you close that down, it snaps in there and keeps that all together. So we want to open that up just like that and then these will fold down like this like that and that exposes his arms so like i said that was really neat because it looks like an underside of a vehicle right there so i thought that was a cool thing the way they hid that right there so take that hide that like that and then we can start to mess with his arms so just pull his arms out just like so pull the other one out just like that and start to get all this done. Let's pull this up here as well. So that camper there, take that, undo that, pull this back and all this stuff, just get these up and out of the way because not, they're gonna get in your way. So do that and all this starts to un come undone. You wanna pull this out like this. And before we do that, let's do this. Let's make it easier, pull the arms out of the way just like that, pull them down and around and take these, flip these wheels in, they're gonna clip in. Whoa. Take the wheels, flip them in like that. Let me stay on frame here, Jack. Flip the wheel in like that. And now you got the wheels flipped in like that. Okay? So now that the arms are up and out of the way, all this stuff right here is going to fold down like this. You're going to take this whole section like this. And that's going to come up like this. Let's get that back some. Come up like that. And this is going to come down just like this. Now, if you look at this right here, there's two gray pegs right here. And they're going to plug into those two holes that are right there. So just take that, flip that down like that, and you can peg those right in that spot, just like that. And so basically you're going to have it looking like this. Okay. Now over here on the back side here, you have these two spots. You got to flip them open and around, flip this one open and around, and you're going to peg that into there. That's going to keep this whole section from flipping out on you. So flip that over like that, lock that up just like that. And then now we're going to mess with the arms here. Take the arms, rotate them. And what they're going to do is on the shoulder pieces here, that tab is going to go into the windshield or back section of the windshield right there. Let's see, right inside. There we go, right inside there. So take that, just kind of pull that backwards, go inside there. And there you go. So that locks the wheels or the uh, shoulders into place by the window. Okay. So now this part right here, you want to get this, and this one's a little bit difficult if you don't do it just right. So right inside there, let's see if we can get that. Right inside there, you notice 
You see that peg that's right there? That's going to go into that peg hole that's sitting right inside there. So you take that, slide that in just like that. And then on the back side here, if we look at this, there's this gray peg here, and that's going to go inside that peg hole right there. So you got it. Once you get all that done, you just get that situated just right, and then push that through, and it's going to be sitting in there just like that. Okay? Now we're going to take this piece here, fold this up like that, and fold that over like that, and then that snaps in, closing up that shoulder piece right there. Okay? So the same thing on the other side here. I'm going to take this up. And like I said, this backpack gets in the way sometimes, so you just got to get it all out of the way. So that way it doesn't uh, get in your way, if that makes any sense. Let's move this arm out of the way, it'll be easier. Okay, so we're going to take that up. Again, line up that peg hole with that slot right there. Where'd you go? There you go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Slide out and slide. There we go, slide in. Okay. Yeah, that one's a little bit of a of a chore sometimes. Okay, so now you got the shoulders in place. Last thing you do is we're gonna put this weapon on his hand. So we're gonna keep one of them in. But what you do is you open it up right here at the bottom of the forearm. Flip that open like that. And you're gonna take this piece and you wanna make sure that the peg is facing down because it's gonna go into that hole that's right there. So you're just going to clip that in just like this, and then close it back up, and that's going to close it up inside there. That way it gives it a nice uh, tight feel. So on the other one, do the same thing, just flip it open. This time we're going to flip his arm out, or his uh, hand. So the hand is actually opened up right here, touching his, his elbow. So just take that, pull that out like that, close that up, and then flip his hand around like that. So now you got him almost all the way done. Okay. Last piece to work on is going to be the backpack. Now the backpack can be a little bit of a chore um, if you don't situate it just right. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take this and this piece right here is going to be sitting right here like this on the back. And this has to fold in and then these have to fold up into the back. So let's get that like that. And like I said, when I was on a plane, this is the part that took me a while. I was sitting there trying to figure it out because obviously this didn't come with instructions. And so I was sitting on the plane figuring it out. And I saw this one passenger just looking at me, probably wondering, first of all, what was I doing? Because he, uh, he was an older gentleman. And so I don't know if he was a collector or not or what, but I know he, I saw him just looking at me. And then you know, he would look away and he would look at me and I was messing with it. And then all of a sudden it became like... No, I got to get this thing done. I don't want this guy looking at me like, hey, this guy's a dummy. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I finally was able to get it. And I looked over at him. And I think he lost interest because uh, he was falling asleep on the plane. So. so anyways, okay, let's go flip this up here. And I think that goes actually against the, let's see here, like that, yeah. So get all this. And you're going to flip all this down. Get it all here. Getting all this. Okay, that's how it's going to be. Because you want these two. That's what I was trying to mess with there. You want where the painted sides are actually against the inside of the window like that. If you do it the other way, they won't sit right. So you want them basically sitting just like that. Okay. So like I said, that can be a little bit of a chore getting it all figured out. But so once you do, you're basically going to have the door panel sitting on the side, the back panel sitting flush against his back like that, and then the rear quarter panel is gonna be sitting up and against this window like that. Okay, so that's the way it's gonna be when you finally sit it all into place. So just slide these forward just like that. Slide this one forward just like this. And then the backpack's gonna sit just like so on his back, okay? And so now, just take this piece, that's gonna fold up like that. And you're gonna take this situated on top, and so right here, you're gonna see these two pegs that are right there. They're gonna slide into those slots that are right there on the back of his, let's get that better, back in the back of that there. Just take that, slide that forward just like that. And then that locks into place like that. So now we can pull out this little, well, let's get this out. 
get that. Okay, situate that like that. And there he is in his robot mode. And I think he's a he's a nice looking figure. Um, I know MMC is doing one as well, and I have yet to take a look at that one. But I have seen some reviews on it. He looks nice as well. So, but looking at this one here, uh, we can see he's a pretty good sized robot. And we'll bring in some other guys for comparisons here in a second. But just looking at him, uh, he looks like a Trailbreaker figure. The face, I don't know, they got it 100% right. Let's get in on that face right there. So, it's, it's a nice looking face sculpt. He's got uh, like a gunmetal metallic uh, gray to his face. A nice metallic blue for the visor. So, that looks good. He's got this weapon over his shoulder right here. And right here, this weapon can uh, fit into it. If you take it off, you can put it up, plug it into there. Or the, the, like I said, the second one that's supposed to come with it will fit onto that. So looking at his articulation, his head is on a ball joint. So you can look all the way up like that. He can only look down so far because the chin runs into the top of his uh, neck area right there. Obviously, you can go all the way around 360. His shoulders are on a cool uh, hinge here. So they hinge up right here, but they're also on a ball joint right there. So there's a hinge here right there and then a ball joint there and then they are on a swivel right here at the bicep they do have a bend at the elbow the one thing and if this bothers you it shouldn't because here you can kind of block it right there with the hand in with this weapon on that blocks it you can't see inside the gappiness that, that is right there but if you look on the other side here and you bend his elbow he does have a gap right there inside there where it's hollow and that's obviously there's nothing inside there. So, again, that one doesn't look too bad. That one does. If that bothers you, uh, it's it's there. So there's not much you can do about that. Uh, waist swivel. He's got that. Legs come out. They go forward all the way. Now, these hip skirts don't bend, but there is this swivel right here. This is all one piece, and it sits in there. That pulls it all the way forward like this. He gets a really high-looking kick like that. Look at that. That's pretty dang high. He comes all the way back as well. He gets a... Nice backwards kick. Swivels at the top of the thigh right there. He's got a double jointed knee. So the knee bends at the top like that on a nice clickety ratchet. And then it bends at the bottom of the knee as well right here. So he's got two joints on that knee, which allows him to get a ridiculous amount of bending out of that. Down here, the toe bends. That's mainly for transformation, but you can get that. You can tilt it as well, again, for transformation. So he's got a, nice, a lot of nice posability on him. His hands themselves... Now, the forgot to talk about that, but they do rotate. The thumb doesn't move. It's by itself. Um, it's pinned right here at the base of the hand, or the base of the fingers, I should say. And then these here are all connected. So, like, that first finger and this last finger don't move in the middle. They're all connected right here in the centerpiece. So, that moves like that, but it's kind of a, a, a weird feel to it, I guess, or transformation part of that. So, that's that. All right, now let's go ahead and let's compare them to some other bots. And right here, speaking of Bad Cube, I have this guy. So you can see what he looks like. Their version of Warpath. So there he is as far as next to him. I'm going to bring in Masterpiece Ironhide as well. We take a look at him next to Ironhide, show his height off with Ironhide. This is Fans Toys Willis. This is show how he looks with them. Pull that back some like that. And let's see who else. We got Wheeljack here. Bring Wheeljack in. Show him off Wheeljack. Here goes Masterpiece Prowl. Right there. See who else do I have here that we can pull in? Oh, last but not least, the staple of all masterpiece transformers, masterpiece prime. So you can see what it looks like with all of them. And that's a pretty good looking set, I think. Uh, is this one for you, him? I don't know. Like I said, I know MMC has theirs coming out, uh, so it's going to be your choice as to which one you want. I think he he looks well. Uh, well he made 
and the die cast metal like i said is right here in the front i try to fill around for more die cast i don't think i felt any more down here i know this bit is die cast here this little piece right here is but as far as anywhere else i couldn't feel any more die cast besides that so but he does have a good weight to him i would say he's probably he's heavier than ironhide prime's heavier than he is but he has a good weight to him um him and willis are probably about the same in terms of weight and that's because he has a lot of die cast in him so anyways there he is uh please like comment subscribe let me know what you think in the uh, comments down below i'm gonna put a description uh where you can pre-order him from i'm also gonna put a description for uh Paik for life has done a review on the mmc version so i'll let you uh take a look at that i'll put a description to his his channel below and um until next time stay safe